Hello everyone. Uh, today, uh, welcome at my next stream. Uh, today, we are going to start uh, from a, something that is called a Greek gift. So let me let me just explain you what is what is Greek gift, and later I'm gonna play some games and analyze them. So please take a look at the position. Uh, okay. So I, I prepared you know a couple couple positions uh, that I wanted to discuss. Greek gift is a way that you can attack your opponent's king or opponent can attack yours of course if you don't pay attention and the thing is that uh, it's it's based on sacrificing bishop at h7 so let me very often you sacrifice bishop at h7 and later your knight and queen can can you know can come and attack that king so this is let's say the most classical example of the greek gift so bishop captures h7 of course King has to take it, right? In the odd, in the case that king goes there, you can still go there, here, and there's gonna be a very strong, there's gonna be a very strong uh, attack also for white. A uh, white is winning as well. So this is the reason why black captures, and now knight goes to g5, and now black has got several different options. Those are let's say three uh, common ways how black can play. So now let's, of course, queen takes g5 is not very good because, you know, here is a piece that is protecting that that, that bishop, uh, that, that knight. So take a look. In case that king goes here, there is always discovered attack. Okay, You can see there is a discovered attack and white is winning at least a queen. So it's quite good. In case that king goes to g6, this is a very often a good move. Uh, this move and now white can go queen d3 but at the moment I think it's even better to go h4 the idea of h4 is to push that pawn forward h5 so black plays I don't know f5 but then you play h5 and king still has to go to this to that place and then you just take it or, or, or something and you have got a discovered attack so it's not very very good okay and let's discuss also the third option that after knight g5, king goes to g8, and later, hello DJ Mad Dog, you go of course queen h5, because okay, it's because you want to go to to h7 actually, and now black cannot stop it. In case that black is trying to move, let's say rook e8, you just go here. I mean, if you go there, king can escape somehow. There's no mate, not that easy. But you just take it here first. Uh, king goes into the corner. You go back. We have got the same position, white just removed that pawn, queen goes to h7, and now I think there is a checkmate at the moment, as you can see, and white checkmates. So that was, let's say, the most common Greek gift example. Okay, <laughs> let me show you another one. You're not going to be surprised probably that it's a very similar story, that white captures, bishop takes h7, and now if king captures, um, of course, you can attack the king with a queen and the knight, but one very important thing. Now, it's not a good idea to start with the knight. Because if you start with the knight, king can go to h6. And you can see there is no bishop. And I have to admit that, okay, white sacrificed material, but it's not gonna be that easy to win that position. It's not gonna be that very easy to execute that, as you can see. Because there is no bishop. So, you see, when you're doing that thing called Greek gift, you have to be quite accurate, and you can go there. Check. Of course, king has to go here, and now knight g5, and opponent cannot stop the checkmate. Uh, very useful thing when you, you are doing Greek gift is that pawn, uh, because that pawn is controlling f6 square. So, in case that knight goes there, hello zb, pawn captures, and you can see nothing can stop white from, from the checkmate. So still need to be careful. Okay, let's take a look at the slightly more complicated example. So we have got position, okay, just a position from the middle game, but white can use Greek gift. White can attack black's king by sacrificing bishop h7. Okay, black captures. Of course, white plays queen h5. Black hasn't got a choice. Black has to go back. And now the question is how to continue. That would be really nice if white has got a knight, so white can enter there. That would be great. But you can see it's not so not so easy. So in this case, actually there is no knight, so white has to use probably the rook as a help. So take a look. 
bishop takes, probably queen takes. Queen takes f7, as you can see, because that rook is supporting queen here. King has to escape. King has to escape somewhere, so king goes here. And now, actually, there are, you know, if white wants to play it very safe, white can take that bishop here and white is up to pawns. But I think it's even better to play rook f5, as you can see. See, it's kind of a rook lift, right? So it's combined idea, Greek lift and the rook lift. Uh, if queen goes there, here, right, queen has to go to e1, because in the other case, rook h5, so takes, takes, and rook goes there. Okay, and white is up, queen for, queen and two pawns for um, rook and the bishop, so that also should be quite easy win. So that was another example. Uh, how can you, how can you use the Greek gift? Let's take a look at, at a different one. So now that position is definitely more complicated. You can see black is up one point. Of course, white can take pawn at the d4, but it's not the best. <coughs> it's not the best thing that, that that you can do, of course. Of course, right now, it's a very similar story. You just need to put it into, you just need to, you know, put it into that position because there is, you sacrifice it here and there is no knight g5 immediately. So you have to make a square for that knight. You can go like g6. And now take a look. In case, of course, in case that king goes back, you can take it here first. And after this move, knight goes to g5. And later your attack is very strong at the moment. Um, and I think that if king is trying to escape, uh, it is possible that king will try to escape. I think you can even play e6 first. So you see that pawn is blocking the king. King cannot escape. And I think later you can bring queen and, and, and checkmate that king. Even by playing, you know, here and here. And black has got a plenty of pieces, but black cannot do that much. So that's the, um, that's the thing. Uh, now the course is like one, one, um, one week, uh, one, one lesson every week. Uh, okay. So let's take a look. So black, of course, is not going to do that. Black is going to play, probably capture that. And now, what a surprise, knight goes here. Queen has to go back. And now, of course, white cannot play queen h5, right? This is like the model move, but you can go there. And now there is a very powerful threat, queen f7. And it's not so easy uh, for black to stop that move, because what does black play? Okay, in case that black plays, I don't know, queen here, you can see queen is stopping that, that threat, but you go there and nothing can stop queen h7 at the moment. Uh, yeah, let me go back. I see DJ Maddock, your question. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, so your question probably was regarding, sorry, regarding this position here and now queen f3 instead of e6. Uh, queen f3, the problem with this move is that king escapes. This is why I think it was better to play e6 because uh, because it stops king from moving away. So that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Um, okay, okay. So I hope you understand that example. Let me show you another one. Okay, that, that one is even more complicated as you can see. Uh, because, I mean, White has white. That king is not as weak. So by using Greek gift, we have to make that king very weak. So bishop takes here, of course. Uh, king takes, and now queen h5. King goes back, and now there is a really nice way to open that king. You sacrifice another bishop, right? In this case, and now you can see that White sacrifices two bishops to completely open the king. King goes there, and now one key move. If you move, for example, rook c3, which would be like a Greek gift, it's not a very, uh, sorry, not a Greek gift, but a rook lift, sorry. It's not a good idea because queen is here. Queen is controlling that square, and in the worst case, black can sacrifice queen for the rook. So you don't want to do that. You have to be very accurate. So check first. King goes to a bad, bad, bad place. This is not a good place for the king, but there's no other choice. And queen checks here. So you see, Black cannot play f6, black cannot play f5, and use queen as a defender. So 
king is completely blocked, king has to go somewhere, and now, for example, rook c4. And now I think it's not possible for black to stop rook g4 move. So it's very, very important to be accurate here. Right? So and this is this is the this is of course the way how you how does white win. Ah, okay, I wanted to show you that if you go directly here, black has got I think f5 move, and there is no rook g4. Okay, let me show you one 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 more example. Okay, and this is example how not to do a Greek gift actually. So just like I, I hope you understand the idea. So now I can show you how not to do that. So take a look. Bishop takes h7. You see last move for black. King takes, and now knight goes to g5. Everything looks good. King g6. Yeah, you see white is down a piece, but white's attack is gonna be very strong. Probably here, queen d3. White has got a big advantage. So this is not probably best that black can do. Similar stories with this move. After this move, probably queen goes to g4. Also a lot of problems for black. But black has got one thing, and those are two knights. Black has got those two knights. And now take a look. If king goes back, queen goes to h5. Black is so happy that there is a checkmate. And you can see that pawn is stopping knight from coming there. But there are two knights. So knight can go back. And in case white captures, knight takes. And you can see that black give back, black gave back material to white. So now it's equal on the material. I mean, black is plus one, but black um, gave back, you know, a piece. But there is no mate at the moment. So you see, Greek gift is a very powerful tactics, but you need to be also very careful when you're doing that, right? It's 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 you always have to check does it really work. So that was that was today's lesson. Uh, hope you you know a little bit more about the Greek gift. Uh, last time, as I remember, it was in between move, and of course next stream on Thursday I'm gonna I will make another. Let's it's gonna be a small surprise for you, uh, but it's, we are not going to talk about tactics, but some very common end game. Uh, okay, so that was that was sh short lesson. So now let's let's play. Let's maybe play some some rapid games. And okay, play. I will try to find the opponent for. Okay, opponent from Germany. Okay. Okay, d4. Last time, if you remember, I played only Tartakover defense. So today, maybe I'll try to do something different. Okay, I usually against the d4, I play I play all kind of Queen's Gambit lines. Tartakover, um, Tarash, I play Slav. But so okay, so but you know what? Today let's play in a Tarash style. My favorite one. Okay, opponent plays London, so Tarash is actually good because Tarash is quite aggressive. So it's quite good against the London. Okay, knight goes here. Okay, I will play bishop d6. I like that move. Okay, bishop g5. But I have got an impression that white loses a time. You can see bishop moved to f4, now bishop is going there. I don't want to. I don't want to go there because you know it only helps my opponent. So what can I play? I can play f6. It weakens my king. I'm not very convinced to that. I can also move my queen to to that place. I can also move my queen there. Um, yeah, it looks pretty logical. Let's go here. I also put some pressure on that pawn. B3. Okay. Okay, how can I develop that knight? Yeah, I don't want to take it because opponent takes back with this pawn. I wish I could go there, but unfortunately my pawn at the d5 is quite weak. So how can I prepare this move? Yeah, maybe that idea and move my knight to e7 and later e5 is possible. Let's let's have a try. I so a similar idea, I know similar idea when I play white, sometimes I'm using that, so okay, let's castle, and can I go here, that pawn is protected by my knight, it 
also opens my bishop. Take a look. I play black. This is move number 10. I have got a very, very strong center. So I think, you see, when you play white, you also need to play, you know, in an active way. Okay, opponent takes here. Should I use my queen or a bishop? I like my bishop on the diagonal. So, because you see, maybe later I can go there. Yeah, there is maybe no Greek gift, but, but <laughs> I, my queen is on the other side. But I like my bishop on the diagonal. So maybe I should take it with a queen. Also, queen is attacking here. So any move like knight d2 is not possible. Okay, I guess my opponent will go b4 or things like that. But I'm not very af afraid of that. I will just retreat. Nothing really happens. Okay, and my plan is to, I have to definitely develop my light square bishop. I think every square on the diagonal is good. A4. <laughs> Maybe opponent wants to attack me with that, that pawn. Should I play A5 and block opponent's idea? Yeah, maybe that looks nice. Obviously opponent wants to attack. Opponent maybe even wants to trap my queen. So let's play A5. Prophylactic move. And I want to develop my light square bishop and later I want to go rook d8. Okay, now question. Can I can I take it at c3 or not? If I take at c3, probably my opponent will go here. Queen b4. I'm protecting that bishop. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. And uh, queen captures c3, rook c1, queen b4 as well, knight b5. Okay, I can get a pawn. I think I can get a pawn, so is that bad? Okay, may maybe, maybe I'm too greedy, but let me take it. If I don't take it, I think my position still is fine. But, uh, okay, of course I have to go to this place. I have to protect it. I don't want to go there because rook c1 is attacking the defender of the bishop at the d6. Yeah, I, I hope that this is not a poison pawn. You see, I, ca I decided to capture. I decided to capture because I was convinced that I can, you know, survive. So, so okay, h3, but... <laughs> to be honest, if someone sacrifices material, you can expect something slightly more aggressive than h3. Or maybe it's blocking that square. But take a look. If I move my bishop there, how white is going to attack my queen? I'm protecting d5 and I can go knight f5. Let's go. Okay, rook b1, so opponent is protecting that, but... Okay, can, can't I play knight f5? What's the point? That bishop is in trouble. And later, I think I still can go there, I can move my bishop back, and my queen has got a safe place at e7. But at the moment, that bishop is in trouble. Bishop g3 doesn't look very good because I can just take it and I can destroy. Okay, opponent takes here. Uh, of course, I'm going to take it with my queen. Yeah, so it was not a poison pawn, right? I can, now it's confirmed. Yeah, also take a look right now. I think I also tried to play e4, 
because that knight is the defender of that bishop. So I think I tried to remove the defender. Okay, right now, of course, I have to take it. Okay, and now, okay, first move that com coming to, comes into my mind is this, because I think it's a discovered attack. But let me calculate this here. Knight d4 takes, queen takes, queen takes g3. Okay, I, I can get another pawn. Okay, why not? And you can see there is also a threat of that. Maybe white is forced to move like king h1. Okay, so white goes king h1. Okay, what should I do at the moment? Uh, I'm up to pawns, so every exchange, of course, is good for me. Uh, according, you know, to the principles, I can play queen e5. Like, you know, I offer a queen straight. I can also develop my rooks. Finally, I can bring my rook. And, you know, rook on the open file is a nice idea, especially if it can be moved forward. Maybe this move. Yeah, I think I don't really want to sacrifice it because I don't see any clear checkmate. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, call state. If you just wanna, if you just wanna sign up for the course, you just need to visit website www.madbobula.com and there is a form. You just put your email and and you can you can sign up for that. Um, okay, you know what? I will bring my rook into the game. Okay, rook c1. Okay, let's. I think should I keep it simple or not? Let's keep it simple. If I were white, I would most probably move my queen to b6, because white cannot exchange. Okay, now two pawns are under attack. Ah, okay, I planned to move queen to b2, but now I see that my bishop at e6 is hanging. Um, hmm. uh, okay, so what should I do here? Queen b6. Take the rook, but then nothing really happens. Okay, you know what? I think I have to. I have to be safe. And later, maybe I can move my queen to b2 or push that pawn forward. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe not h3, but uh, ah, yeah, but you know, h3 was f ten moves ago, so definitely there was something better. Okay, and I want to move my queen to b2. I'm, atta I'm attacking rook at c1, I'm attacking bishop at e2, and I'm attacking... Okay, rook captures. Okay, I have to take it back. Bishop goes there. Can I go here with my rook? Queen d8. Okay, but I have got an idea. I think I can move my queen to c7 and I can protect all of my hanging pawns. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, queen b5, and of course I can move my rook that is hanging, so maybe rook goes here. Maybe someday I can push that one forward. Oh, 
also queen c3 looks very strong okay queen e2 but opponent plays definitely too passive way can't i push it forward okay let's go it also opens my bishop bishop is pointing there Ah, that is here. Okay. <laughs> okay, it looks very scary. Mm, okay, so what should I do? I think simply here. And after check, I can move my... Something wrong with those arrows today. I can move my rook back. Queen is also supporting that pawn. Can move forward. Why not? Okay, should I push it forward or not? Or should I maybe play h5 to make a safe square for my king? Or if I go f5, bishop takes check king goes here check g3 you know i play e3 first and now i think that's gonna be much stronger because now i think f5 is a real threat because bishop takes i go there here queen d6 g3 and i have got rook d2 or queen d2 queen d2 even queen d2 would be nice um so let me calculate that again. I think it works. Here, 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 g3. Rook goes here, king goes somewhere, I take queen takes, and then what? Hmm. Yeah, there is always the checkmate threat. That might be a problem. Okay, I have got two minutes. I have to I really have to speed up a little bit. Okay, let's play h5. Safe square for my king. So let's bring more pieces into the game. You can see there is a pin. Maybe I can. Okay, blundered pawn at h5. <laughs> okay, but hope I really hope that that pawn is not that important. Okay, I have I really have to admit I don't like the way you know I play. I'm just dealing with my advantage because very early I got the advantage, but last I don't know 10 moves or even 15 moves, I didn't really improve my position. Queen E4 looks like also like a decent threat. Okay, rook C1. kind of a double attack yeah maybe this is not that bad okay queen c7 and i was waiting for that okay so opponent made a tactical mistake there is also queen h2 and now instead of taking here i can take it here first and later i can exchange queens and now maybe yeah let's exchange bishops Of course, my rook protects that thing. Okay, with four pass pawns should be easy. Okay, <laughs> I should start with this move. Okay, let's go here. Okay, 
let's just push my pawns forward and I think after this move I threat a check kind of a checkmate oh, opponent wants to exchange okay Okay, I think game is over at the moment. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was an exchange. You have to you have to move back a couple moves. It was just an exchange. So it wasn't for free. I exchanged queen for a queen. Okay, h2. Okay, my opponent is still fighting. Okay, and I will probably promote another another queen. Okay, and I think this is a checkmate. Uh, okay, you know what? I know that it wasn't the most fascinating game. I easily got the I very quickly I got the advantage, and something went wrong later. Uh, but okay, you know what? I think it wasn't it wasn't a fascinating game. So let just let just play one more. Okay, opponent from Sweden. Now I play white. Okay, so let's go d4. I'm gonna play maybe my standard lines, standard systems with g3. Okay, g6, so it can be King's Indian or Grimfeld, but d5 is a little bit too early. After knight c3, d5 is a Grimfeld, yes, but now this is still Grimfeld, but this is a bad line for black because why it gets a very strong center. And this is the reason why it wasn't such a great move. Uh, okay, now I just want to develop all of my pieces, but I want to... Opponent is going to attack that pawn by playing here, bishop g7, maybe bishop g4, trying to pin my knight. This is the reason why I'll start with h3. Hello, Shachowa. And now bishop e3, bishop e2. I have got a very strong center and I think it's not so easy for my opponent to attack it. Okay, knight is going to that place. Should I stop it or should I ignore it? What happens if I play b3? Maybe opponent wants to come c5. Yeah, but I'm not afraid that much of this move. c5, maybe I will just play rook c1 or castle. Okay, so c5. Yeah, I think I'll just castle. Of course, I couldn't capture there because my knight was hanging. But in this case, I will take it maybe with my bishop. I don't mind exchange a little bit. Uh, okay, here. Let's just take it. Okay, I'm bringing even more pieces into the game. So my rook, later maybe I can activate my knight somehow. How can I activate my knight? What opponent's going to do with that bishop if I go here? Bishop goes c8 or bishop d7. If opponent, okay, opponent doesn't want to keep that bishop, so. Yeah, let's just take it here. Knight takes. And now you can see that I think my pieces are slightly better, but what is quite important, I have got a bishop. And position is more open. So at least in the theory, bishop should be better than the knight. Let's start here. I'm attacking the knight. Also, I'm just my bishop is watching uh, the c8 square. So opponent cannot bring the rook to c8. Okay, opponent goes there. Now my next idea was to go there. And if opponent captures, queen takes here. 
does it make sense or not on oh, knight f6 then and what happens yeah that doesn't look that bad but is there and because opponent wants to obviously wants to play e5 so maybe after this move opponent can still go there maybe so maybe i would just remove that knight let's go here let's exchange it e6 probably i'm gonna play e5 and put my bishop at f3 But if I go there, rook d8, bishop goes back. But if I go there, opponent will go e5 for sure. Let's go e5. I know that d5 square is strong for the knight, but I have got bishop here. I think my bishop is going to be very strong on the diagonal. Yeah, maybe it's not a huge advantage, but I'm pretty sure I'm slightly better because of my bishop okay how can i improve my position now one idea is to push that one forward a4 yeah okay i like that idea okay i try to think of something else queen b5 but it doesn't create any threat so what else i can take it here rook takes or maybe queen e4, but then knight d5. Let's play a4. Okay, so now opponent creates two threats, one threat and another threat. Would be nice to stop it. I mean, e5 is not hanging at the moment. So maybe rook goes to c2 or rook goes to d1 exchanges opponent captures at e5 but then i take pawn at b7 and i have got i have got pawn majority on the other side which is which looks pretty nice but if i move my rook to c2 opponent goes here i take it rook takes uh, rook c7 okay i like this move more Yeah, if I were black, definitely I would go a5. Knight d5. Okay. But if I take... Okay. <laughs> Can I take it or not? Let's take it. Pawn takes. Okay. And we have got a queen set. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe I should, I should think a little bit longer. But you see, I didn't want to tolerate knight there. And now take a look. Opponent has got the... This is pretty interesting endgame. Opponent has got the... <coughs> the pass pawn here I have got a pawn majority would be nice to move it forward and create my own pass pawn also the problem with the queen's endgames is that it's very easy to give a perpetual check so I have to be very careful but it has to be this move yeah perpetual check is something that can that makes that position very drawish it's very very easy to give a perpetual check hello Ralica. thank you okay have to move forward okay and now what should i do opponent obviously wants to push it forward so logical move would be to move queen to d3 after queen to d3, opponent will go probably queen c5. If I go there, queen c3. I think I cannot exchange. Because my king, if I exchange pawn takes, I play b6. Yeah, opponent promotes with a check, so I lose. So I cannot do that. So what happens if I go there? Here I play king f1. 
check king e2. Yeah, it's not a common idea to move king in the middle in the queen's end games, but here might be good because I think I threat uh, to go there. King e4 and taking that pawn. Yeah, but if I want to push those pawns forward, for sure I have to move it here. Blocking that pawn and I also want to move it queen c5 and I, I told you that this is going to happen. So I will try to bring my king. Also, queen c3 doesn't work because takes takes. And I go king f3. This is very weird, but king at f3 is quite safe. Black hasn't got any direct checks. H5. Okay, so now what can I do? I can move my king here. Can I do that? I think so. Queen cannot take it here because I, I win that pawn. In case that opponent plays f5, maybe I go there. Check, king c5. Takes, takes 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 king f6 but my king is uh, much definitely more active so let's move my king here okay now now I, okay but after this move this is very easy win because i have got the pass one that is very far and i just go here i just go here and now this is like the old trick of course if i take king d7 but old trick a6 and the game is over <laughs> okay i have to say that i really like let's just let's just let's just review this game uh, yeah i played chess for over like 25 years so it's you know pretty pretty long time uh, but uh, let's take a look let's take a look at this game let's take a look what happened there let me explain you one thing about the greenfield after knight f3 if someone wants to play greenfield bishop g7 is definitely a better solution for black because if pawn take, if after this move castling bishop g2 and now d5, and now my bishop is already at g2, which is which makes very hard for me to play e4 at that point. So this is the reason why if black this is the more correct way of playing Greenfeld as black. D5 D, d5 works, but after knight c3, and in this position, here knight takes c3. Uh, yeah, and this is a common Greenfeld. But okay, opponent played there. E4 here, h3. So that was all good. Bishop e3, castling, knight a5. Now I played b3. Okay, I, if you remember, I had got some doubts about this move. Maybe I should just castle. And if opponent goes rook here, two things are hanging. Yeah, but maybe just simply bishop f4. And there is, I think, no point in... Um, yeah, I think I, black cannot take it because I think of this move and knight is trapped. Knight might be trapped, so it's not very good for black. Yeah, so maybe, maybe. okay, I have to say that if I play it right now, most probably I would castle first. Okay, I played b3, c5, castles. Okay. Bishop takes here, knight c6 exchanges, rook c1. Okay, you see, uh, I have to say I like rook c1. Uh, yeah, see, it cannot be, it cannot be wrong. I'm just bringing more pieces. Uh, I'm just bringing more pieces. No, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> right now. I'm just focusing more on coaching, so uh, probably I will not be GM in the future. It's not so easy, right? It's not like that you can become a GM in one month. It's a couple years of you know hard, very hard work, and 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 you have to play in a lot of chess tournaments. Knight g5. Okay, actually, I'm just checking because I'm just also watching the engine and it doesn't like my knight g5. I thought that this is great if I can exchange knight for the bishop. Engine says that the best move was queen c2 and later bring the rook here. And black probably has got a problem what to do with a queen. Yeah, so maybe that was slightly, slightly better. Um, okay, let's, let's, 
here knight d4 i captured captures bishop g4 knight d4 all the time i'm slightly better and now this move if you remember i considered also this one but i told you that after this move it's pretty good but e5 is a problem and it's a big problem because i don't see any way how can i remove that knight this is the reason why i did play i did play uh, knight e2 uh, but okay knight e2 here takes e6 rook d1 yeah i think i'm slightly better at the moment and now i played a4 uh, okay you, see, you remember i analyzed a couple different options right now and uh yeah i just i just and a4 a4 probably is not the, the best move uh now this is like a self-guided but of course of course there are some points that that that, uh, that you can ask me questions you have to you have to you have to see that right you, you ask me questions i will of course answer you if something is not clear but i i show you how can you improve in chess how, how should you work on the most important chess elements actually what might be funny opponent thinks this is the best move yeah but it's not after this move queen e3 but maybe my bishop is slightly better but i don't see i don't like that line actually because of rook goes to c2 yeah it's not a not a very good move okay here here takes queen g5 rook d1 exchanges and now a5 i'm pretty sure a5 was the best move for black and because you see one pawn is stopping my two pawns and this is a big big problem and yeah, this is huge problem i have to even say yeah okay let's go back so exchanges ah, okay uh, knight d5 i captured takes here of course queen takes is not a good move because such a pawn endgame and now i have to play i think i have to play before right now but you see because of that pawn majority my position is better okay and she doesn't like before no but i'm pretty sure it really has to be correct and now i play f4 and what does opponent play after this move i think i have got b5 i think i have got b5 and black has got some problems but okay anyway opponent captured with that queen d3 okay now i have got a big surprise king f3 i thought that this is such a good move and engine thinks this is a blunder no i don't believe that king f3 is a blunder what's wrong with this move i think i really like my idea that i can move my king there i was so proud of that idea completely i completely disagree with the engine of, of course i could go queen g2 but queen d2 but then queen a1 i completely do not agree with the engine i think this is you know uh, king f3 is a fantastic idea in my opinion and now take a look h5 king e4 and now take a look of course of course i'm trying to opponent cap by taking it here opponent loses immediately right because you saw what happened in the game and now nothing can stop my pawns and now of course i play a6 and it's over right because king is out of the square you can see this is this this is the square and king cannot enter there so this is lost but let me show you what could what could happen after this move because if you remember i calculated this move f5 and i wanted to go there and after this move i wanted to go here and after this move i wanted to take it let me just double check it i'm pretty sure this is win black goes there and i play king d5 yes it has to be win it has to be win because this is the pawn end game and you can see that my king is 10 times more active than my opponent's king so yeah so it really has to be um it's it just win of course i have to be careful so my opponent cannot create any pass pawn on this side so not king c7 king b7 f4 and now of course I have to be careful because i think if i take it here if someone doesn't pay attention f3 
and black might be even winning, right? Because after this move, the pad is the pass pawn. So I have to be careful. By but I would, I would be, I would capture it here and then take the pawn at a7. Yeah. Okay. I have to say that 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 game was quite an interesting one. So let's play. Let's let's play one more. I think there are like I I really like especially the end game. Uh, okay. Next opponent from Philippines. Hello. How to. Okay, I, I told you that I'm gonna play, play the Taraj today, so let's go Bishop G5. Okay, <laughs> okay, another sideline. Actually, you know, as I can say that London is a pretty annoying sideline. This is not that, not that scary. I usually go C6. I think I could go even H6. Yeah, let's play H6. My idea is to go there. I'm attacking that pawn, and now I can move that pawn forward. So because you know that pawn is not pinned anymore. Bishop goes to f5. Later, I want to play e6. Yeah, th that position is looks more like a Slav defense. And I play e6. Okay, I bring my knight. Yeah, I think I have got no problems at the moment. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Shekhovo. This is actually my dad's idea, but <laughs> but I, I think it's also quite quite nice. Okay, here. So now, of course, the battle will take place in the center. So you can see this is that bird's beak structure. So now I have to think how to counterplay. If f is one possibility, but of course now it's not not, not possible. Taking it here. Knight takes. I don't want to activate opponent's pieces. So let's go c5. This is this kind of Tarash center. I told you that I'm going to play the Tarash. Yeah, favorite player. <laughs> I mean, there are like a couple players I really admire, but, but, but I think there's no one player. I really like Fisher. I really like... Uh, Morphe, Capablanca, but 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 I think I don't have one favorite player from the history of chess. Okay, rookie one. Maybe opponent wants to play e4, but I'm not afraid of that move that much. Or maybe another idea is that opponent is waiting for me to capture some pawn takes back and later knight goes to this place. Maybe that's the, that's the point. But you know what? I think I can move my rook to d. It's always a good idea to have a rook in a, such a place. Should I go there or not? You can see there is an x-ray. Another rook maybe will go there. Sooner or later, I think I'm gonna take it, but I don't wanna help my opponent, right? Because opponent obviously wants to wants to have the rook on the uh, on the half open file. I'm not going to help my opponent in that. Yeah, so let's bring. It cannot be a mistake. Okay, e4. <laughs> so position is even more complicated. And now there's no other way. I have to calculate all possible captures. So I think I have got three captures. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna start calculation. If I take it here, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, knight f6. Yeah, queen goes somewhere. I don't know. Queen e3. Looks good. I like this position for black, but this is this is gonna be probably very typical position. Right, so I, I like that. I, I like this this position for black. I think it's gonna be more or less equal. I also have got a strong pressure on that pawn, so maybe it's even good for me. I don't want to take it here because knight here is very very annoying. So no, this move I reject. And after this move, 
I'm not afraid that opponent will take back pawn at the d4, but opponent can take pawn at the d5, and pawn at e6 is pinned, so you can see that rook. And later opponent can get my pawn from at the d4. So that move was correct, that move I don't like, and that move I think is awful. So the logical move is here. I take it, and then I want to go knight f6. That's the whole idea. Okay, so knight goes here. And now take a look. I have got three attackers on that pawn. Opponent has got three defenders, but now queen at e4 is under attack. And I'm just very curious what white's going to do with that. Because moving queen e3... Yeah, I have got some doubts about this move, because I can take and I can play bishop c5. I told you that I have got some nice possibilities in this case. I'm not saying that I'm winning, but if opponent takes with the... Okay, opponent captures with the rook, but then I think after bishop c5 I get the open file. Because opponent has to take it. I take it. You can see I control the only open file, and I have got a really nice... Uh, really nice pieces there. Queen f4, another mistake. Let me explain you wh why. Uh, so take a look. Uh, yeah, thanks Brainstorm. Take a look at this position. We have got very common position. So black has got pawn majority 4 against 3. And white has got pawn majority 3 against 2. So 3 against 2 should be slightly better. And it is slightly better. But the, the, the side... You know, who controls the D file has got usually the advantage. And I'm the one who controls that file. So I have got the advantage for sure. Because my rook is here, so the only highway is, is, is you know, in my position. So that's the, that's the thing. Yes, exactly. I'm just thinking of knight h5 because, you see, there is also that battery. And if I go there, I think I can threat to remove the, the defender. And white has got some problems. I'm not saying that, that black is winning, but I can... Re let's let's imagine, let's calculate. Here, queen g4, I take it, queen takes. And now that queen is kind of... has to stay there, has to protect that pawn. So, and I have... I can get the bishop. Of course, position is more open. Bishop is 100%. I'm 100% sure that bishop is better. Let me just double check, is there any other good alternative, but... No, I think I will go here. Let's keep it simple. Okay, I take it. Okay. And now what can I do? My first idea was to play rook d3. Pin my opponent even more. Okay, so this is one idea. I'm not afraid of any checks because I always have got a safe square. Okay, what white is going to do? I will allow white to you know to make the move. But of course, I have got the advantage. You know, the D I control the D file. Okay, but this move looks like a small blunder, at least to me. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> well, I think opponent agree with me, so that's the that's the thing. But but take a look. What what else? Okay, I will just make a, a game review. I'm just very curious. Opponent blundered in the end, but I'm just very curious uh, about the final position because yeah, rook d3. Rook d3 was a mistake according to the engine. So what should I play? Ah, okay, Engine wants to play a5, trying to probably attack on this side. But rook d3, why that move was bad? I like this move. You see, in the practical game, I think it's really nice. I'm just, you know, increasing pressure on my opponent. Not so easy to find any good move. Uh, 
Yeah, it's not so easy to answer the question what is better. I play French, but you know, it's used better to my style. Sicilian is definitely more sharp. French is, is also sharp, but it also has got a lot of strategical ideas. So it really depends what do you prefer and, and probably slightly better is Sicilian. But, but, but I still play French because, you know, it suits me better. Uh, yeah, okay, actually, engine wants to play this move for white, protecting that pawn, but okay, I think I can even go there. And I can just simply exchange uh, those things, and now I have got the advantage. And my plan is very simple, push those pawns forward, use my bishop and destroy my opponent like this. But of course, it's I'm, I'm better, but it's not going to be very easy win, so I was... My opponent helped me a little bit. Okay, let's play another. Let's play another game. Okay, opponent from Spain. <laughs> I can play very tempting. I can play e4 and I can check. Um, I can check uh, my opponent. How good is my opponent in French? Okay, I do that. Now this is the last game so today, so I, I'll play this. You just need to know that I have got no idea about French from the white side, but I know a lot of about a lot about French from the black side. So someone asked here about the French, so let's play the main line. So we've got a Vinaver variation. Knight e7. Okay, let's play here. Then I'm gonna take it and let's go Queen g4. So this is the the sharpest line. Uh, Definitely the sharpest line, and opponent plays that very old line. So, yeah, Talbot Finnick. Talbot Finnick. That 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 match was that line was played many times. I played it with black, but it was like 15 years ago, and since since this time I don't play that line that that often. I mean, I think I haven't played it for the last 15 years as black. It's very complicated. I don't like complicated positions. I know that now there are two moves, knight e2 and because I have to protect it. I think this is slightly better, as I remember. Okay, pawn goes there. Uh, should I play f4 or queen d3 first? What should I play first? I think d takes c3 is not the most accurate move. But I think I will go, I'll start with f4. I'm protecting that thing. I want to go back and I want to take it. Okay, d4. Very common idea, but what happens if I take it? Knight takes, queen takes. Yeah, my opponent played it very quickly. Maybe there is a line like this. Uh, yeah. Mm. But okay, let's take it. I think I can take it. I hope so. No, queen c3 was not possible because I played knight e2. Okay, bishop d7. So obviously my opponent knows that line very well. But let's take a look. I'm up a pawn. The problem at the moment is that upon black has got some kind of initiative. So what can I do? After bishop e3, there is this annoying move, knight f5. I cannot move my bishop because uh, rook takes here. So maybe I'll play rook g1. Yeah, I think rook g1 and g4 is a common idea for white here. Let's go. Now, so bef before uh, there was <laughs> there was no before I played knight e2, there was no queen c3. I'm pretty sure about this because opponent captures c takes d4, and later I immediately played knight e2 to control the c3 square. You can check in the in the notation of this game. Yeah, there was something with rook g1. I remember I felt very insecure uh, in that position when, when I was playing with black and with white, it's... Yeah. I think I want to go there. I want to play bishop e3 as well. Yeah, probably black can play. Okay, bishop c6 doesn't work because I take. 
knight c6 I take knight f5 what happens after knight f5 maybe queen b4 yeah maybe queen b4 rook d8 opponent has to also pay attention for that Ah, yeah, sorry. Yes, of course, if I capture c takes d4, queen goes to c3, of course. Yeah, sorry, so, sorry, I misunderstood. Sorry for the misunderstanding. I thought that you are talking about this thing. Of course, I couldn't capture c takes d4 because of queen c3. Yeah, so maybe that rook g1 was actually a good move. Yeah, knight f5. Knight f5, knife f knife f5, right? As, 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 as they are saying. Okay, so what are my options here? Uh, B4 is an option, E4 is an option, F2 is an option. <laughs> I like this move, I have to say, because now I control H4 square. I think I have never seen Queen F2 move at this position. Maybe there is a reason. Maybe there's something wrong with this. But what Black is going to do? Queen B4, A5. I'm not so convinced. Queen E4, Bishop C6. So let's go. It looks looks quite weird, Queen F2. Yes, but remember that that that, that I'm up on the material. Uh, if I go there, Queen E4 probably. Queen goes to E4. Annoying check. So maybe I start firstly with Bishop D3 and later G4. I control that square. Black is down a pawn, so black has to create threats. Not so easy. Okay, position, of course, black has got kind of initiative, but it's not so easy to... Because, you know, it's not so easy to play this with black, because if I can consolidate my position, if I can play g4, if I can bring my dark square bishop, I think black is not in a great position. Black will be in trouble. Yeah, because what 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 okay queen d5 what's the point probably the idea is to bring knight here so if i go here knight goes to d4 and knight wants to enter there looks pretty scary so the question is how can i react bishop e3 i don't want to do that because takes takes i lose that pawn it here so i don't like it i can take it here of course pawn takes and i can move let's say bishop e3 we have got opposite color bishops in the middle game. Usually in such a positions, uh, the side who is attacking the king has got the advantage. My opponent is attacking the king. But I'm up a pawn. And if I can, you know, bring my rook, yeah, maybe it's not bad. But the g4, let me just check it again. Or maybe here, here, and I play rook g3. My rook is controlling that square. Later I want to play bishop e3. In case of the check, I can move my bishop back to this place. Hmm. But one second. If I go g4, knight goes here, rook g3, bishop c6. Okay, looks like black has got some kind of initiative. But, uh, hmm. okay, I, I think I'm gonna take at the f5, but I'm really afraid of that bishop, bishop d4, knight d4. I mean, there is also an alternative, uh, a4, and I can put my bishop at a3, but it's, uh, no, it's too slow. It's really too slow. 
Okay, let me let me take it. Now I have to for sure develop my bishop. Casting might be risky. Of course, I cannot castle because of the queen. But I have to bring my rook somehow. I have to maybe activate that bishop. Yeah, but rook, rook b1 gives me nothing, in my opinion. I think opponent cannot castle because I take that pawn. In general, I think I threat to capture pawn at da7. I have got four minutes, opponent has got four minutes. Okay, but bishop at the d6 doesn't prevent castling because opponent, I know that bishop is attacking here, but opponent can castle because king cannot go through the attacking you know, square, but rook can go through such a square. Probably this is the reason why I gave, I gave up playing uh, that line with black because position is so complicated and I definitely prefer strategical positions. So. But yeah, but this is what, the, of course, end games are drawish with such a bishops, but middle games, I, I think I told you already that, but the side who can attack the king as first is in, a, is in a better position because if let's imagine black can start attack on my king using bishop my bishop cannot stop that bishop right because you know opposite color of bishops can never meet meet each other this is what does the principle say okay so opponent's trying to use the bishop trying to attack it here okay if i bring my rook or should i take it I mean, bringing rook looks more logical, but probably queen goes there. So I rook d play here. Opponent takes, takes, takes. Rook goes to c4. Yeah, not that bad for me. Yeah, I have to. I have to use my rook. I told you that I'm planning to go here. Okay, well, now I feel definitely more comfortable. Queens are no longer on the board. Bishop e4. Of course, I have to take this pawn. I cannot allow my opponent to go there. I have to take it. Rook takes g2 probably. I will take it. Bishop takes. Okay. <laughs> now let's stop for a second. Uh, because, take a look. It's equal on the material. Opposite color bishops, but we've got the rooks. And now take a look. Uh, at the moment, I have got the pass pawn. That pass pawn can be very dangerous. And yeah, this is this is a great thing, but you see, I think I have to move my rook to this place. Yeah, I have got the rook and the bishop. Maybe I also have to attack opponent's king. I I really want to move that pawn forward, but I think it's 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 it gives black a time to consolidate. 
Hello, Lula Robs. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the raid. Thank you for the raid. Hello, everyone. We're just playing some games and trying to explain some chess ideas. Okay, king goes, king goes to f8. Yeah, opponent was afraid of my attack probably. And now if I go there, king goes to g7, but maybe then e6. That looks very, very, very promising. Uh, hmm. Should I do that or not? Okay, let's go. I think king cannot go there. Okay, king g8, of course. So now, now what? Maybe I can start bringing my king closer. It's always a good idea to bring the king, or should I push that one forward? Let's bring the king. Yeah, in case that opponent goes, for example, I don't know, king, king goes somewhere here, I go there, rook d8, I play bishop d6. So my king and the d4 can also feel pretty, pretty com comfortable. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Lula Robs. Thank you very much. Okay, a6. So opponent wants to move that rook, but now that square is weak. So if I go there, b5. No, I don't want to help my opponent. I really don't want to help my opponent to activate pieces. Let's continue with my king. Bishop e4, okay? So now the question, is it the time for me to start bringing my pass pawn? Why not? Bishop d6 as promised. Ah, maybe now king goes there. If I go here. Yeah, you see, I think I have to move my... Okay, let's move my king first. I'm attacking those things and also I'm attacking here. So what? Let's continue with my king. Rook a8. Okay, so opponent is defending here. So now, can I move my pawn forward or not? Bishop's here. No, I don't want to sacrifice such a powerful thing. I can go there, exchange as a5. I can go there, but it's going to lead into pawn exchanges. I don't want to exchange... Does it gonna lead? B4, A4. B3, I go back. Okay, I think I'm winning. And now after B4, if I take, I think it's gonna be a draw. But I played this move because I saw that I can play it here. And now take a look. I can get that pawn. I can stop that pawn with my bishop. And now I have got two pass pawns. Opponent cannot stop them both. At least I hope so. <laughs> I completely forgot about the B2. <laughs> I had got such a great idea, but I completely forgot that my pawn at a4 is hanging. And I ruined the whole thing. King B, just simply king b4. Why not king b4? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what can I do? Mm. Yeah, but this is gonna be a draw. I have to move my bishop to g5. I'll try, but this is... That position, of course, most probably is a draw. Yeah, because opponent can set up some kind of a fortress and I cannot do that much. I'll try, but... Yeah, I will make a couple moves more and probably I'm gonna offer a draw because... Yeah, what can I do? You see, everything is blocked. I cannot use my king to, to, to go to this place because... Yeah... No, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna flag my opponent. Uh, especially that, that, that you know, I, I, I don't like someone is flagging. 
but hmm. okay I will try okay if I go there I will lose even so I have to be careful okay I will offer a draw because you know it's just just a draw let me just just go back to one moment I just have to check one thing in the moment I, I played I had got such a great idea it was so nice but in the moment I missed B2, it was very, let me, let me tell you that it was very, very painful when I missed that, that B2. Okay, let me, let me just go back to this position. Of course, that position, I will even check what does the engine think, plus 2.4. Just King B4, that pawn has to be protected. And opponent goes King G6. I think I can play A5, King H5, I go there, King takes I go here opponent has to stop it and now I think I have to take it opponent goes there okay and now I think I can just simply go bishop c1 is that win or not opponent moves bishop somewhere I go there I go here now I'm definitely yeah you can see I'm definitely faster and you see I can yeah opponent is just losing opponent is just losing so <laughs> yeah okay you know right rating is not the most important thing in chess right this is first thing but so so take a look let me let me let me go back it was such a nice game ah okay i, I will also check the opening because um it was so nice so nice i was so proud of the idea of playing a4 but king b6 was it was a real disaster but let me go back to the opening I will just open opening explorer and now d takes c3 okay i told you that there is something wrong with this move and then there is knight c6 more common but okay f4 is the main move here queen d3 and actually there were 200 games played d4 so it was still the theory knight takes knight takes queen takes this is still good bishop d7 okay so far 93 games ah okay i told you that i'm not sure but i saw rook g1 idea the most popular move is rook g1 65 games knight f5 this is still the theory <laughs> and now queen f2 58 games and 50, all 58 were played queen f2 queen c6 bishop d3 okay so we are just playing the whole theoretical line queen d5 okay and then this position you remember i was thinking what to do because i considered this move but i was very afraid of knight d4 and now this that there is first move that I have changed the theory here because there is bishop f5 move but it's only one it's only one game and now bishop e3 I will just check I will just check bishop a4 no one played bishop a4 okay but let me check for the future okay I'm pretty sure I mean I don't know maybe maybe I can play French with white again but rook b1 is the move or a4 I think I even considered a4 for a second I didn't consider rook b1 I think even someone wrote on the chat that queen a2 is coming but I think queen a2 is not such a good move because of that but I, I'm not sure that someone mentioned that so what's the line rook goes there bishop c6 and now rook b4 a very strong move probably threats here controls that square okay rook goes to d8 and now rook c4 trying to get that pawn okay <laughs> okay I, I understand this um okay I, I i think i understand this a little bit more so yeah so that's the that's the thing but i think it was a pretty nice yeah i really think it was a pretty nice um yeah pretty interesting game okay let me just check one thing uh yeah i think it was my uh my last uh, my last game for today uh, hope you enjoyed the stream um, and thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the stream please please click follow me right the next stream please click follow next stream is gonna be on on um, on Thursday so feel feel invited for the stream and now we are going to make a ride to Alicia Santeramo so please say hi to her uh, yeah, thank you very much and hope to see you on Thursday. Bye.